11.4 segment lengths and circles. How can we say that these triangles are similar, these two triangles? Well, first of all, we know that these two angles are vertical angles, so the vertical angles postulate. Then we can see that the arc AE is shared by both ABE and ADE, which means that angle B well, at vertex B and angle D are equal angles by the inscribed angles theorem. And to show that two triangles are similar, all you need are two congruent angles. So they are similar by angle, angle. That's a similar <laughs> symbol. It's a bad one though. They're similar by angle, angle. So if that's the case, if those two triangles are similar, if I take away the segment A, uh, B, A, and D, E, we've got just an intersection of lines inside of a circle, which means that if those two triangles are similar, then their lengths are also similar to each other. So give the proportions implied by the similarity statement above. So we could say that A, A, B, we're going to take that one away, but A, B is similar to E, D. We can also say that B, C is similar to C, D. And A, C is similar to C, E. And then on the diagram, you can see we're going to take away those two segments and we're just going to use these two statements to make a linear statement. So we can say that B, C times CE is equal to AC times CD. So if we wanted to say they wanted to calculate CD and we knew only um, the other lengths, you could say BC is times CE and then that's equal to AC times CD. So you're multiplying the two segments together to make your equality statement. That's for an intersection that's on the inside. This is an interior intersection. You just multiply the two segments together and set them equal. And then we're also going to look at what happens when it's an exterior intersection. And again, there's three different scenarios that can happen. Two secants, a tangent, and a secant, and two tangents. So let's do a, a two secants first. So let's do an exterior point out here. We've got one secant that goes to it and a second secant that goes to it. If we want to know something about these lengths, what's happening is that you take this part, which is from the edge of the circle to the intersection, and then you've got this whole segment. And what you do is you multiply those together, similar to this one. So you're gonna, I'm gonna just write it out in words. So you're gonna do the part times the whole equals the part times the whole of your second segment, of your second secant. How about a tangent and a secant? So let's do a similar exterior point. So here's my secant and here's a tangent. So then you would do the part times the whole of your secant, of the secant, P standing for part, and then the tangent, there's no part and whole to it. It's just one segment. So you're multiplying it by itself. So it's a tangent times a tangent. Or in other words, the tangent squared. Then two tangents. So those two are um, equal. And it's just going to be a tangent equals a tangent. Of course, you could do tangent squared equals tangent squared, but that's just more work. We know that those are the same length, and we're talking segment lengths today. So here's our example. When the GPS system was designed, engineers wanted to minimize both the number of satellites and the distance that the transmitters needed to send signals. If the satellites are at an altitude of 12,500 miles, how far must the transmitters send the signal? 
So we're looking for this length x. We've got 12,500 to the earth. And then we also know that the earth's diameter is 8,000. So if you are going to set this up, we want the length of these tangents is what's going on. So we're going to be using this second tangent and a secant because we've got our secant and a tangent going on. So it's going to be a part times a whole equals the tangent squared. So that's going to be 12,500. That's our part times our whole 12,500 and 8,000 is uh, 20,500 equals our tangent squared, and that's a uh, missing piece, so x squared. Multiply that and then take the square root, and x is approximately 16,008 miles long. Sorry, you couldn't see that. All right, let's check up with some naked number problems here, checking key concepts. Write three true statements about the lengths of the segments in the diagram. So the first one that I notice is that we've got an intersection on the inside. So we can talk about the multiplication of the segments here. So we can say, I'll write it over here. So we can say that EG times GC is equal to FG times GD. Sorry, that's running off the page there. Okay, we, I see two tangents. We can say that AB is equal to BC. I'm sorry, BD. Those are congruent. Uh, we also have some tangents. So in our and tangents and secants. So let's look at this secant for a second. So if we have this one, we could say that BC times BE equals AB squared. And that's three statements. There are other statements you can make. You can work with the other tangent and a secant here if you want to, uh, but those three are good. Find the value of each variable. So 18 is a tangent, so x is also equal to 18. Three, an intersection is on the inside, so we're going to multiply the segments together. So 5 times 2z equals 10 times 15, and then we can solve for z. So 5 times 2 is 10z's, 10 times 15 is 150, divided by 10, and z equals 15. 4 is a secant and a tangent, so part times whole equals tangent squared, so part 18 times the whole, which is going to be 18 plus 2y, that's the whole, equals the tangent squared or 24 squared. 18 times 18 is 324, 18, whoops, that's a plus. 18 times 2 is 36y, 24 squared is 576. Minus 324, 252, and divided by 36, y equals 7. Thank you.